recording one two three we are on the air <laughs> i'm so glad you guys are enjoying these classes because i love them this is this is wednesday intermediate class so i'm not going to put in hard chords not today um two Ooh. Songs. Woohoo! no don't look for anything super hard in these in these songs today because you're not going to find them yep um the, Intermediate means just that. You're well on your way to learning. Remember, you can come to any and all of the Zoom classes that I teach. And if it starts to get a little bit overwhelming, just don't put in the extra stuff. You don't ever have to put in the extra stuff. That's always, always optional. OK. Um, we have a very important song to learn today. It's called Happy Birthday. Why do you need to know that? That you should know why you need to know that. You need to know that because it's just a song you have to know. <laughs> According to the 1998 Guinness World Records, Happy Birthday is the most recognized song in the English language. What would you think the second one is? For he's a jolly good fellow, believe it or not. I would not have chosen that one. I would have picked Jingle Bells. No. <laughs> but for he's a jolly good fellow, probably because it's also sung at birthday parties. Um, the melody comes from the song, Good Morning to All. Um, those of you who had me back in the day for level one, we had a song in one of our books called Good Morning to All. And it was uh, done that way for copyright purposes. But I, uh, Happy Birthday obviously is now in public domain because they're putting it in easy play books. Um, traditionally, Good Morning to All has been associated or attributed to American sisters Patty and Mildred J. Hill all the way back in 1893. So they're actually giving them credit for happy birthday to you, even though they wrote the good morning to all. They were school teachers, and they were looking for um, easy ways to teach their, their school kids how to sing. So they made up the good morning to all song. Probably the most famous rendition of happy birthday, who do you think? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Marilyn Monroe. Mr. President. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe, absolutely. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe has the most famous version of Happy Birthday that's out there. All right, so what are we looking to learn in this song? We're on page 34, by the way, in book number 15. This song is written in the key of F. Those of you who learned it with me as happy birth or as good morning to all, we learned it in the key of C. So this is going to be a little bit different, a little bit different. You're going to have some B flats in this. So your chords are going to be F, B flat, C, or C7, which is C and B flat. And that's it. Those are the only chords. But you do have some pickup notes. The pickup notes are the two eighth notes at the beginning of the song um, that is an incomplete measure, an incomplete measure. You cannot start a pickup note on beat one. You have to either count backwards or you can go to the end of the song because music is mathematically correct. And if you have an incomplete measure at the beginning of the song, they will always put the, the balance of the incomplete measure at the end of the song. So if you go to the end, you see a half note in a measure all by itself. And that is the rest of the counts for the two eighth notes that are at the beginning. Mathematically, always it's done that way. Why? I don't know. It's just the way it is. And now, if you ever go on Jeopardy, you will know the answers. So that's, that's one of the reasons to know that. Otherwise, just play the song the way you see it. But the pickup note starts on beat three. So if you're playing along with me today, I will count one, two, three, one, two, and then you start. And they're actually starting this one with a little intro instrumental introduction. I probably don't have that loud enough. And then the lyrics don't start till 
the second line. So if you wanted to eliminate that first line with no lyrics, you could, and just start with where the lyrics are in page on the second line. But again, you're still going to have the two pickup notes for happy birthday, which would start on beat three. You also see in line one, you see over the D at the end of the line, you have a little bird's eye, a little rainbow with a little arc with a little bird's eye in the middle of it. That is called a fermata. Fermata. Now that just means you can hold the note as long as you want. You can hold the note, you can wave to the neighbors, you can take a drink of water, you can do whatever you want. If you're using the rhythm, you have to watch because when you come back in, guess what you have? Nice. Two more pickup notes. So you can hold that fermata as long as you want, but when you come back in, you better come back in on beat three or you're going to be off. When we play it in class today, we will not regard the fermata. We will just play that D as a quarter note. You're going to see that again at the end of the song. Over the D quarter note, there you have it. You have the other fermata. Same rules apply. You can hold it as long as you want. Just make sure that if you are using the waltz rhythm, you must come in on beat three or it's not going to sound right. Now, how can you get around that? Don't use a rhythm. You could just put on the easy button and just play it the way you would sing it. And don't worry about any rhythm at all. And then it would sound like this. Then you don't have to worry about how long you hold any of the notes. You just play it the way you would sing it. So if you don't really want to worry about the rhythm, just put it on easy and use the notes and the chords here as a guide and play it the way you sing it. Okay, if you are using a rhythm, put it on a waltz. Put it on a waltz. Any waltz will do. And about 90 beats a minute is good. The sounds, anything you want. That's one good thing about this song. This is one that you can just make your own. Make your own. So I'm going to put it on waltz, and it's going to be easy waltz, which is waltz full band on, on some of the smaller instruments. And rhythm preset, and I'm going to slow it down to 90. And we are going to play it with an introduction. Why? Introductions are very good because what it does is it sets your ear and the listener's ear into the key that you're going to be singing this in. It also gets your tempo going in your head so that you know how fast the song is going to be played. If you just start with the pickup notes and play, you're, you're kind of, it's a surprise as to how fast it's being played. Now it does say NC, no chord at the beginning. That's optional. As long as you are playing the key that the song is written in, that chord, you're not going to have any problems. Now, why do we start the intros in the key it's written in? So that it sounds right. If you, can, if you start on any other key, it's going to sound like you're starting a completely different song. Okay, so what key are we in? This one's pretty easy. F. F. We're in the key of F. And we know that because it's not the first chord that tells you, it's the last chord. The last chord of the song. 
99 times out of 100, there are cases where you have a song written in two different keys, and so the last chord is not going to work for the first part of the song. If that happens, then try the first chord, and if that doesn't work, call me or email me, and I'll figure it out for you. Okay, so I'm going to put it on waltz, and we are going to use the introduction. What happens if the introduction goes by and you're not ready to play yet? Keep going. Just let the music keep going. Don't stop and say, oops, i got to start the introduction again. Keep going. Just make sure you come in on beat three. Okay, here we go. Happy birthday. I did not use the note chord. I just played right through the F chord, and it was absolutely fine. So don't worry about that note chord. Any questions so far? This one's an easy one. We'll do some fingering, and then we will move on. So get your pencils out. The chords you should know. B flat is just your thumb on B flat. Don't go backwards. C7 is C and B flat, pinky on C, thumb on B flat. And here's your fingering, C1, C1, C5. Now there's two different ways to do this. I'm going to give you one way first. C5, A4, F3, E2, D1. If your fingers are long enough and you can skip those notes coming down, just do 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If your fingers are too short and they don't fit that, do C5, A3, F1, E2 with a circle. Cross it over and then D1. So whichever one is more comfortable for you, and then just make sure you do it the same way when you get into the bottom of the song. Okay. The B flats at the end of the line can either be, okay, here we go with another set of two fingers. Let's try this. B flat four, B flat four. Second line, A3, F1, G2, F1. Check mark. C1, C1, D2, C1, F4. Third line, E3. C1, C1, D2, C1, G5, F4. C1, C1, here's that same run. Choose the one that works for you. I'm just going to give you one right now. C5, A4, F3, E2, D1. B flat 4, B flat 4, A3, F1, G2, F1. Okay, for those of you who want to play along with me, I'm going to slow it down to 80. If you want to play just one hand, just play one hand. If you can do both. I'm not going to do the introduction. I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Oops, let's get this back up here again. It turned itself off. There we go. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, we're 
we're gonna play it again one more time. Let's pick a different sound this time. One, two, three, one, two. song. That's why we're going to do another one. Yeah, that only took 20 minutes. Okay. But it was a good review. Any questions? Nope. Okay. The next song is called Heart and Soul. Now, let me get this set up here. Perfect. Okay. Um, how many of you, when you were kids, sat down at the piano when, especially as girls used to do this, and you'd get a couple of little girls sitting at the piano and go, oh, let's do this. And then the other girl would pick it up and go, Right? And we thought that was the greatest thing because we could play a duet. Mm -hmm. That's what this song is. That's what this song is. It's a popular song and it's Hoagie Carmichael and Frank Loser. The song's A section is often simplified as a repeating 1, 6, 4, 5, C, A minor, F, G, or 1, 6, 2, 5, C, A minor, D minor, G. D minor and F are relative chords. Now, why am I teaching this today in an intermediate class? Because I want your brain to be aware of these four chords together, either C, A minor, F, G, or C, A minor, D minor, G. I'm going to be adding the A minors. They didn't put them in this. So over that, over that C half note, I'm going to be adding A minor. So don't worry, I'm going to throw those in for you. That is one of the world's most common chord progressions. As a matter of fact, it's often referred to as the 50s progression because all the hits of the 50s and 60s used it a lot. A lot. In 1938, Heart and Soul was performed by Larry Clinton and his orchestra with vocals by B. Wayne. Other versions were done by the Four Aces, the Cleftones in 1961. And by the way, if, if anybody saw the, the movie American Graffiti, that was the version that was used. And then Jan and Dean also did a version of this in 1961. Now, I want you guys to be aware of that chord pattern because once your left hand understands where those chords are going, they kind of just flow automatically, and then you don't have to think about it. Have you ever gone to a piano bar and somebody wants to go sing something and the piano player says, hum a few bars? Well, guess what they're doing? They're trying to figure out which chord pattern works because in popular music, it's one of three or four, and that's it. It's not that they're magically know, know what the song is. Okay, some people do. <laughs> there are some talented people out there that can just hear, hear it and figure it out. But most of the time, it's because popular music was written on chord patterns. And if your fingers understand the patterns, then your practice time and your playing is going to be a whole lot easier. As a matter of fact, this chord pattern that I'm showing you today, which is C, A minor, D minor, G, and I'm throwing in the A minors. C, A minor, 
and do it in pairs. You can just add the A, D minor, which is D and F, and then the G. Okay, you can play a hundred different songs with that. I don't have a hundred of them here, I've listed a few. But as far as 50 songs, absolutely. How about this one? Blue Moon. Same chord pattern all the way through. How about this? For your love. How about this one? Summer Place. How about this one? And this chord patterns are just staying exactly the same. My left hand does not magically know what to do. It's just C, A minor, D minor, G. Here's one. More. C, A minor, D minor, G. How about this one? Okay, the last chord was a different one. Um, how about this one, Beyond the Sea? Okay, and one more, Unchained Melody. How about that one? Okay. hundred other ones that do that. Now, the only reason I want you to know that is so that your brain is aware. If your brain is aware, when you see another song with those four chords at the beginning, you can go, aha, this is going to be an easy song. Your left hand is going to get it. And then all you have to do is concentrate on learning the right hand. So it'll make your practicing a lot easier. All right, let's add some chords to heart and soul so that you do indeed have that chord pattern. The C is good for two counts. Over the C half note for the word soul. That's where the A minor goes. A minor. There's your D minor and G. Second line, it's going to be the same thing. The C chord is good for two counts. Over the E for soul, A minor. Then there's a D minor and a G. Let's do the third line. Exact same thing. Over the C for Lee, Mad Lee, put an A minor. Now the last line, no changes. Just leave that as it is. Because that's kind of a connecting piece. Then we go to the second page. Second page. The C is good for two counts. Over the C half note, guess what? A minor. Line two, same thing. The C is good for two counts. Over the E half note, A minor. Third line, same thing. Over the C half note in the first measure, put an A minor. The next two lines, no changes. That's another chord pattern in there. We won't go over that one today. But that's going around a whole circle of chords. When we get to the top of page 37, the last measure on line one starts the whole process over again. 
The C is good for two counts. Now remember, last measure of line one. Now you see over the last half note there, put an A minor. The next line, second measure. Over the last half note for the word me, put an A minor, C and A. Third line, same thing. The second measure over the last C half note, A minor. There's your chord pattern. It just repeats throughout. And that's it as far as chord changes. That's it. Again, fairly easy, but I just want to get your brain attuned to this so that after a while, your fingers will get the chord patterns. And you can actually pick out songs that have those chord patterns, and you won't have to worry about your left hand. And then you can just pick out things with your right hand. Dawn, okay. can you go over those chords on the, sec on the third page there? Please? Yes. Page three. Top line, oh, you want me to tell you what the chords are as far as the A7 and the D7 and all that? Or just adding the ones that I added? I added an A minor at the end of the first three lines. Over, those C, this, over the C half note at the end of the line, add an A minor. Over the E half note at the end of the line, add an A minor. Over the C half note at the end of line three, add an A minor. That's it. As far as the sevens, let's start on the bottom of page 36, where it says, oh, but your lips were thrilling. Ooh, much too thrilling. Wow. Wow. Okay, the F is good. The E is just finger on E. If you wish to play E7, it is D and E. Fourth and third finger. If you wish to play A7, it is G and A. You can actually just take your thumb and place it on the G and the A at the same time. Or play pointer and thumb, doesn't matter, G and A. Remember the rule for sevens is the letter minus two. You have to count the black ones as well. D7 is C and D, fifth finger and fourth finger. G7 is F and G, pointer and thumb. The E7 is repeated. It is D and E, fourth and third, and then again at the end of the line. And then it just repeats at the top of the page, A7, G and A. Play it with your thumb if you wish, or play pointer and thumb. D7 is C and D, pinky and fourth finger. G7 is F and G, pointer and thumb. And I think that's pretty much it. You've got an E7 down here on the second to the last line, which is D and E. Questions at this point? Nope. OK. Let's do some fingering. This is going to be a short day today. All right, C3, C3, C3. C3, B2, A1, B2, C3, D4, second line, E5, 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 check mark. The next E quarter note for the word the is a three, D2, A1, D2, E3, F4. Third line, G5, C1. You might want to put a little arrow on this A. Make it a 4. Do not make it a 5. 4, A4, G3, F2, E1, D2. Cross it over. Put a circle around it. C1 on the bottom for the word tight. Let me hold you tight, or you held me tight. D2, E3, F4, G5. F4, E3, D2. 
Check mark. Check mark means lift your hand, take a breath, reposition it. Top of the second page. C3, C3, C3. Next measure, C3. B2, A1, B2, C3, D4. E5, E5, E5. Check mark. You're at the end of a sentence, end of a phrase. So you're going to lift your hand and reposition. The E in the next measure over the word and is a three. D2, C1, D2, E3, F4. Third line, G5, C1. Put an arrow on the next A. Make it a four. Don't make it a five or you'll run out of fingers. G3, F2, E1, D2 with a circle. That means you're crossing it over and then your thumb is free to start the C1 on the next line. D2, E3, F4, G5, C1. This time you can make the A a 5. A5, G4, F3, E2, D1. The C sharp in the next line is a 3. Put a circle around it. You're crossing over the third finger. D4, B2, C3, A1, B2. A5, G4, F3, E2, D1. Top of page 3. The C sharp is a 3. Circle it. You're crossing it over. Notice anything? It's the same thing we just did. D4, B2, C3, low A1, B2, B2, C3, 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 second line, C3, B2, A1, B2, C3, D4, E5, 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 check mark. Third line, E3, B2, C1, D2, E3, F3. Four, G5, C1. Next line, A5, G4, F3, E2, D1, E2. Check mark. And the last line, F5, E4, D3, C2, B1, C2. And then my suggestion is play the song again, but the second time you play it, transpose up one half step. Transposing does the work for you. So it'll just take the entire keyboard up one half step. So you have to find where your transpose is. If you are on um, an easy four, an easy ten, you have to go into um, the screen, which would be get, your, get to your feature button, Press feature and scroll until it says transpose. Touch select. That's the last thing you do before, after you set up your song. The last thing you do before you start playing. And then when you're ready to transpose up, you just touch the top scroll button and it takes it up. Now for the rest of you that actually have transpose, and oh my goodness, it's in a different place on every instrument, and this one is new for me this week. Where's the transpose? Oh, here it is. It's next to the window. And it says up, sharp, down, flat. And when you are making arrangements for music, most of the time you want to transpose up a half step. And what's that going to sound like? I am going to play the last two lines, and then I'm going to transpose it and tell me what you think. And all you're doing is touching the transpose up one. I guess I should set it up first. There we go.
last two lines. it did it brought everything up one half step now you can do that while you're holding a note you can do that while you're holding a chord and you will hear that transpose going up in some songs you want that transpose to be a surprise so in that case you want to do a no chord you remember how to do a no chord a no chord is any three notes in the left hand some people like to call it a smash chord. I don't think that's very ladylike. I like to choose any three notes. I usually do F sharp, F and G. But your drums are going to keep going. But you can't hear anything else going, so no matter where you transpose it to, nobody's going to hear it. And then if you wanted to do a drum solo, you just do the fill-in at the same time you are doing a no chord, and then your, your transpose is a surprise when you come back into it. Play around with transposing, going from just play the song once, the second time, play it again, and try different ways of transposing, because there's no right or wrong way to do it. So you just got to find what works for you and what works for that song. Okay, what kind of backgrounds work? Go to your song setup. A lot of you have it in there. Nolan's Pianist comes up under Foxtrot with the altar at 94. Um, basic Foxtrot, this, this organ here, which happens to be a beautiful imperial. It's a beautiful organ. It comes up in the imperial under basic Foxtrot with the altar at 120 beats per minute. Now, I think that's a little fast. Um, I've got it, uh, it came up to here at 117. Um, you can slow it down. You can slow it down to 94 if you wish. Other ones would be the two-beat piano, which comes up under traditional or standard pianist. Standard, those of you that have Freedom 3s, standard, swing time, it's awesome. Those of you that have Easy 4s, Easy 10s, or Fanfare's Journeys, the standard guitarist, guitar swing, is awesome on this. Or you can even do standard full band, which is Frank and the Count. And again, your tempo anywhere from 94 to 120 or slower. The tempo is totally up to you. Or you might actually find some other rhythms that work well for you. But what I like about this one is that it gives me that, that um, da 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 da, what, what the girls play, this part. That's what's in the background of this one. There it is. And when I change chords, it's doing exactly what that second duet girl would be doing, or guy. Okay, I am going to play the song, and you can follow along with me. If you want to play along with me, feel free, but I will do it again at a slower tempo. Okay, here we go, heart and soul.
And all I did was transpose up, and I did not make it a surprise. I did it while I was holding a note so that you could actually hear the transpose. There are other songs when I do it, when I do the drum solo and make it a complete surprise. But that's just your choice on that. Any questions so far? We talked about chord patterns. Talked about instrument instruments on this piano, piano and strings. They did put some brass down here, whatever you want. But what a difference. This is a Hoagie Carmichael song. For those of you who joined me in the Tuesday class, we did a different Hoagie Carmichael song, and it was hard. So he wrote some easy stuff, too. Okay. If you are close to your instrument, go to your instrument, put it on easy only. Make sure you are muted, and we're going to play it at 90. And if you want to just play one hand, please feel free to just play one hand. If you want to try both hands, go for it. But we're slowing it down to 90. Instead of an introduction, which, by the way, in this song, your introduction is in the key of C. I'm just going to count to four. And then we go. One, two, three, four. Second page. How'd you guys do in that bridge area? The bridge area is, starts on the bottom there where all of a sudden all the chords go cattywampus. Oh, but your lips were thrilling, much too thrilling. Never before were mine so strangely willing. Ooh, that's very romantic. But now you see what one embrace can do. Look at me. It's got me loving you madly. That little kiss you stole held all my heart and soul. Very romantic song. Very nice. Of course, you wouldn't expect anything less from Mr. Hoagie Carmichael. Questions? OK. If you have any questions, or and it doesn't have to be about this song, it can be about anything that you're working on, do not forget to email me. Um, those of you who don't have my emails, it is 50 to eight at fletchermusic.com I will answer all your emails or give me a call but sometimes I don't get the messages until the next day and that's just our crazy phone system so probably the emails are actually safer or come on in and see me As long as we don't have more than five people in the store at the same time, Mr. Riley's okay with that. I hope everybody is staying safe. How are we doing on time? Not too bad. Any questions, comments? 
I miss you guys all in class at one time. Then that's I do. I miss you guys live, but it's fun to see all your faces. Let's see. We miss you a lot too. Oh. Okay. Yeah. What a nice group of people. It's good you closed the bathroom door. Yes, I know. That was Janet's suggestion. <laughs> yep. Yep. I just closed the door. Good. Yep. Good Janet choice. Emailed me. Yeah, Janet emailed me and said, I love what you're doing, but do you know that we have a straight shot through to the ladies' restroom? <laughs> I did not realize that. So thank you. I'm open to any suggestions for anything. As far as next week goes, let's see. What do we have coming up here? Hey, Jude. Oh, good song. Okay. That'll be the only one we do because there's lots of stuff with that. <laughs> Lots of stuff. Okay. Fabulous. Don't forget, concert on Friday. This is the big concert for the whole company. It's going to be the first time that a lot of people in the company have heard Randy and Dawn. And uh, I, it's, is it a little nerve-wracking? Yeah, but not as nerve-wracking as last Saturday when I had to perform for you guys for the first time in four months. So this this will be a, a little bit easier. And are we ever going to get to every Saturday concert? Don't count on it, but we may start doing Saturdays just for the villages, maybe once a month, maybe maybe uh, twice a month. I would like to do a a uh, name that tune, a guessing game. Although I can't throw candy through the through my, through the screen, that's going to be the only problem. So you guys are going to have to get your own candy bowls, and when you get something right, you can throw them up in the air. So it feels like somebody's tossing them at you. So we'll do we'll do stuff like that, but we'll announce it we'll announce it before we do that. And I'm open to suggestions too. So no worries, we're we're here for you, and we will continue entertaining and educating because that's what we do. Okay, you guys, if there are no more questions, I will see you next time. Well, I'll see you on Friday, 2 o'clock. Stay safe, and I love you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Dawn. You're welcome. Love you guys. Miss everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.